So this is the inside of uh, my computer, and you can see it's not that well cable managed. It's not too bad. Um, what's cooled CPUs under there? That's an EK uh, velocity block. Um, soft tubing. It's, it's probably about I don't know ten years old. That water cooling tubing. Ten sixty Nvidia. Uh, video capture card, RAID card that uh, just runs a Blu-ray drive actually, all the other devices are on board. And then a Firewire card over there that I use for transferring video from old school tapes. Um, that's about it really. Um, it's a MSI 570 Pro, I think that's the, the code. Oh yeah, you can see that, X570A Pro, which is close to the cheapest um, Ryzen 570 board you can get, pretty much. Um, I think it might even be the cheapest. And the B550 MSI Tomahawk board that I've recently bought was about the same price, I think, if not slightly more expensive. So it's a no-frills board, but it's fine. It works perfectly. Currently has 32 gigabytes of Corsair memory. I think it's 3600 speed, but I can't remember, to be honest with you. So the plan is to swap the CPU. So this is my, this is kind of my like everyday use computer that I use for video re rendering as well. And well, occasional gaming. I'm not much of a gamer, to be honest with you. And and then the idea will be that the chip out of this will go in my old workstation for now, which is like my daily daily driver, I suppose. I use for work. Um, and then at some point I'll either get another one of these, or maybe even a slightly higher spec of the new Ryzen's. Perhaps with uh, higher core count. Because I don't actually need a super fast um, workstation, because I have access to, well, supercomputers basically, um, I don't need to worry too much about it being cutting edge. Just trying to get this open. So there's the chip, try and get it in focus, and so just need to swap these around and hopefully I've uh, got enough thermal paste to reapply it, um, should do. Right, let's get this one off. This block's new but I had an EK block before which I used with an old um, socket AM3 plus board so I've got experience of them in the past generally pretty good not the cheapest blocks but I suppose none of them are these days I'd actually like to upgrade the, uh, the tubing on this uh, water cooling setup because I'd quite like so quick release connectors so it's easier to get the motherboard tray out if I want to do some upgrades or maintenance or whatever. Because um, at the minute it's not. Okay. It's coming loose now. I did find that this um, water block actually was not as effective as I thought it might be. And I don't know if it's something different about the way 
heat transfers off more modern CPUs, but the old ones seemed to actually uh, work better and the water would get noticeably warmer, but the CPU would actually stay cooler. Um, that seemed like a transfer issue to me. So it'll be interesting to see how well this looks like it was applied. Uh, looks okay. Yeah, I mean, that looks fine. Anyway, I'll wipe it off and do it again, just in case. So let's get that old chip out. So this is a Ryzen 3300X, which actually I think is a really good chip and uh, it was pretty good value, so you get a bit precarious there, isn't it? Could easily fly off and splat something. Okay, so next job, let's pop the new chip in. Of course I can't remember which way around it came out, so I think yes. I can't see, it's a bit too far away. I think it was that way up if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. Easy. So I've already updated the BIOS, but actually I don't think I needed to. I think the BIOS would have been fine as it was, but I noticed there was a bug report about something or other, so it's just pretty straightforward to update it anyway. Right. Let's get that old thermal paste off. And find some new one. Let's go with Thermal Grizzly. Now I'll just switch it on. So I'm not all one of those people who's too fussed about what their computers look like on the inside, as long as they work stably, it's fine. So I certainly don't go in for RGB and all that kind of stuff. Just not interested. Don't have anything against people that are. It's totally up to them. I think they look pretty cool actually, but. It's just not really something I'm that fussed about. I just need computers to work, do what I want them to do. This system is pretty good now. It'll be. I don't do a lot of video re rendering, so I didn't really think going any higher on the core count was really worth it. And. Same for the RAM really, 32 gigs plenty for this. On my workstation I have 64 because I actually do do some things that require quite a lot of RAM. And then my Unraid box because it's doing all kinds of things so has 128. But I've never run out of RAM on this or come anywhere close. So I'll probably leave it as it is for now.
mount pressure on these doesn't seem too high. Those springs. There's an indentation on these uh, thumb screw things. So even though they look like they're going down, they're not actually pushing that hard on the spring. But it seems to be fine. And just when they stop, don't try and force them. That one. Just that one, I think, then. There you go. Yeah, that's all them down. So that's it, really. Assuming it works. So I've got these two... These fans are so loud. I have to, like, really mess with the fan curve so that they're slow and they're not... And the thing's cool and then just ramps quickly when it gets kind of hot otherwise it's not the quietest machine um, I could probably do to change them really but ah, another day GPU I got quite recently second hand um, it's fine for what I need I might actually think about upgrading to a uh, sort of an NVIDIA 3000 series maybe the 36 3060 or the 3060 Ti maybe because I think that would be quite good for um, some of the video rendering stuff I do and maybe the odd game but at the minute this is fine I have a 1650 in my workstation that I also got second hand um, and then a 1050 Ti to go in my Plex server that, that's part of this whole reshuffle so this, the uh, 3300X will go in the workstation and then all the workstation innards will go into the server and then the server innards I might turn into a media computer because it's got an onboard GPU um, so that's the plan, right, I'll switch this on and see if it works So the system's running now, I don't have a very good setup for showing stuff like this because I don't really have very much space in my little computing den um, but hopefully you can you can see uh, and probably hear that it's running of course it's all reset the BIOS is reset because the new CPU is detected but I can uh, basically load load in the old settings and mess about a bit and you can see the BIOS there and up there on the top right hand side is Ryzen 5 5600X 6 core CPU and all the memory is detected uh, the memory speed is currently wrong because XMP is off but I'll sort all that out and let you know how I get on but it does work this system has a lot of fans um, fan at the back two on the radiator that massive grill is a fan and then there's a now kind of pointless hard drive fan tucked in there this is slow though so it doesn't make too much noise um, that cools an SSD and an old bit of spinning rust that I use for games and stuff um, and then other kind of fun things this uses a really old uh, Radiate, uh, not radiator, reservoir and pump combo, which you might be able to see. Um, and then this is a quick release hot swap two and a half inch hard drive thing that I'm slowly filling up with SSDs that I used to store video projects. It's got two one terabyte SSDs in it at a minute, and whenever I run out of space, I just add in another one. Um, chipset fan isn't moving. I guess it's probably just not hot. Right, okay, I'll uh, configure this uh, BIOS. So I got it set up. It uh, took me a while to remember how to um, configure it for Legacy Boot. I couldn't, uh, couldn't remember which bit of the MSI BIOS setting that was in. It's not the most intuitive BIOS, I have to say. There's a sort of weird spread out of the different settings. So some, like, 
there's a sort of advanced mode and then an easy mode and then there's sort of a mixture of what's accessible between the two and then there's a sort of splash screen at the start as well so it's all a bit yeah it's not the best it's all right but i think uh maybe i'm just a bit old school i just prefer a menu uh good old american mega trend style but anyway system seems to work fine i reapplied the overclock the xmp overclock to the memory and uh it's booted and all well it's all detected as as you'd expect really um so you can see here the Horizon 5600X detected by Linux and that uh, particular core is running at that speed but obviously it can uh, boost up to, I think it's 3.8 or 3.9 this chip, I can't remember to be honest with you. So I haven't really benchmarked it yet to see if it's uh, significantly faster than my old one but to be honest I didn't really record uh, too much um, performance measures from the 3300x anyway so i don't really have anything to compare it to other than the official benchmarks which right, they are what they are one thing i have noticed is that um the temperature sensor doesn't work and it's just reading zero that's a little bit annoying actually because one of the things i was quite interested in was uh how the the sort of thermal transfer like i said to the the water block would be on this system. I can see I've got a good flow through the uh, the the, uh, the the water water cooling loop uh, because I can see a bit of turbulence from the pump in the reservoir. Um, and I've got a fan curve on there. I've actually managed that this time. I've configured the fan curve much better than I did last time, so it's it's quieter when it's under general use, and then it sort of ramps a bit better when it starts to get. Uh, under load but yeah I don't know what the temperature is which is kind of annoying so that's a bit of a shame um yeah so I'll, I guess there'll probably be a kernel update that allows Linux to read that temperature sensor but I don't know when that's going to come and because I use the LTS version of um, Ubuntu it might not actually come down onto the LTS um, version and well for quite some time but you never know, maybe there'll be a patch or something like that and it'll, it'll work. It's not the end of the world, it's just I was kind of interested really to see what that temperature was. Um, but I'll just have to make do. But it seems fine. I think the first big test of how it runs and how stable it is will be rendering this video actually. So um, I'll be interested to see how that goes. But these sort of drop-in upgrades are dead easy and you don't really expect to have any trouble with them. When I put the other board, the Tomahawk B550 with the 3300X into my workstation, I expect that could be a little bit more of a, an involved job because there's a potential there that um, it's... Well, I could foresee two issues with that, really. One is whether or not the boot drive will be detected correctly. Um, should be, I hope, but I've had issues with whatever hard drive in that machine is booting the system before uh, so transferring it to a new motherboard might be a bit of a pain the other issue it's got a windows install on there but to be honest if that dies or doesn't work it's not the end of the world because i don't I can't remember the last time i actually used it since i got a virtual machine running in unraid uh which has the it has a pass-through graphics i'll do a video about that actually because i had to faff around quite a lot to get the pass-through working um, because of some peculiarities with that motherboard, but anyway, works fine now. Um, yeah, and then the other thing is that it, it, the Linux install there will be moving from an Intel motherboard and an Intel CPU to an AMD motherboard that's a lot newer and an AMD CPU, so I could potentially run into some issues there, whether or not it sort of has a bit of a stress. Um, but the other things all should, I mean, the the hard drives are mounted using their UUIDs and it's the graphics card will be the same, so it should be okay. But I do need to do that when I can afford a bit of downtime on my workstation. So it could be a while before I actually get that update done. I might have to leave it for a week or two. Um, but I just ordered the parts all at the same time because I wanted the CPU and I was expecting it to take ages and it did. So that's it really. Dead easy drop-in replacement. Um, 
this system probably won't change now for quite some years. I tend to upgrade my computers on a sort of four or five year life cycle because I'm not a gamer. I don't have to worry too much about um, staying with cutting edge graphics and so on. It's more about upgrading things when they get a bit old. Um, so the Intel system in my workstation is, I think, eight years old, something like that. So it's, uh, it's overdue an upgrade. And like I said before, when I need something high performance, I'll just borrow a server at work and let that do it. So don't really need anything particularly uh, exotic at home. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that there. So thanks very much and I'll uh, see you in the next video.